right, I think we nailed it first try. Yeah, we did. All right, cool. So I'm here with Ben Wright and the penthouse crawlers. Yeah, yeah. Or at least part of it. Yeah. You and the yeah. upright bass player. Two of us, yeah. So today, I'm gonna learn how to play banjo and play banjo like for real. I have a series of videos that were like some of the first things that were really popular on this channel, which were metal banjo covers. Okay, so like. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, playing Slayer on banjo. Yeah, 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 yeah. A reoccurring comment on all of them. That's not really banjo playing. You're just playing guitar on banjo. Like, play banjo for real. And today I get the chance to do that. Yeah. So Ben Wright is a professional banjo player. Like, bluegrass, would you yeah. say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or really, really fast bluegrass playing. Yeah, that's a big part of bluegrass banjo playing is playing fast. As a guitar player, you're playing with a single pick. Yeah. And, and you're playing super fast, but I'm using three fingers. Like, the style of playing I'm, yeah. I'm playing is called three fingers style or scrug style because because of Earl Scruggs. Earl Scruggs I do know Earl Scruggs yeah yeah like having three picks allows you the ability to play faster cleaner and you can divide it amongst the strings and divide them amongst the fingers and then play really really fast like the first tune that comes to mind is foggy mountain breakdown absolutely that's one of the first tunes you 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 kind of have to learn yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is the core of Scrug style mm. banjo. But I take a little bit of an issue with people giving you a hard time and saying you're not playing real banjo because yeah. there's a lot more ways to play this instrument yeah. than just Scrug style. Mm. And it goes back way before Scruggs. Yeah. I mean, the banjo originally came over from Africa. That's like one of the few things that I know about banjo. Yeah. Also, I wanted to point out that I didn't even really need to say that you were a professional banjo player. You can just look at the head of this banjo. <laughs> 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 yeah. You can see the hours. Which one of us is the professional banjo player? <laughs> You know, one of the core things of bluegrass banjo is you have to anchor your fingers. Mm -hmm. I've worn the paint off this plastic Oh, so that, that's your ring finger right there. Yeah, and really my loud. ring and my pinky together. If you change the tone of the instrument, the closer you play to the bridge, the more banjo it is. You play the, yeah. you know, so. So here's a heat map of how often you want the twang. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, and I can see you want it more often than not. Yeah. I do, yeah. and that's a personal taste thing, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I really do like the twang. It's what drew me to the instrument in the first place. Yeah. You know? And I would think with, with bluegrass as well, because there's so many other instruments backing you up, you would want that twang to, like, really cut through. Absolutely. When I'm taking a solo, when I'm mm -hmm. in the lead, which is one of the tenements of bluegrass, kind of like jazz, too, is, like, everybody has a shot at taking a solo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when I'm taking a solo, I do tend to be closer to the bridge to really cut through. If I'm doing my job correctly, when the mandolin or guitar ticket or solo, I should be up here oh. to stay out of their ways. Guitarists actually have a similar thing with the, the pickups that we use. Oh, is that what? Bri yeah, like bridge, you're usually in front, you're like more twangy, right. and then neck pickup. Back to the origin of the banjo, yeah. or, or even further, what is a banjo? The great, 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 great grandfather or mother of this instrument came from West Africa. Mm -hmm. Probably the most famous is called the Akonting. And we've been lucky enough to tour over there, and we played with a guy in Niger that uh, had a Akonting. It was a three-stringed mm -hmm. instrument. It had a string halfway up the neck, like my banjo does. Mm -hmm. And all I had to do was tune my banjo down a half step, the whole thing, and we were able to play together. Wow. Didn't speak a word, yeah. it, but we could play music together instantly. Yeah, um, and there's so, probably like, what, hundreds of years between those two instruments? Oh my gosh, and, yeah, and, uh, easily, yeah. like hundreds and hundreds. You know, but what happened was the slave trade, mm -hmm. Atlantic slave trade, all these enslaved people came over to America. We do a lot of work with kids, and I, mm -hmm. I, I think that's an important thing to talk about is the real history yeah, absolutely. of this instrument. Those enslaved people, we're still making instruments, yep. and and that's where the banjo took seed in the U.S. It's had a complicated history since yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. The first time that I learned that the banjo was originally an African instrument, mm -hmm. that was like completely counter because I I only associated with like bluegrass and like the southern United States. With a little bit more thought, it's like, oh yeah, it makes sense that it would be prominent in the southern United States. That's Right, like, I mean, that's where a lot It was of... brought over by the slave trade. Right. The idea of the banjo was brought over by enslaved people. Yeah. Didn't change that much. You just have steel strings, right? This is now a drum. Like, it's so yeah, obvious. Yeah, this is just like, this is just a, right. a drum. This is a fairly typical bluegrass banjo now. It's pretty heavy. Ooh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that is just a big hunk of metal. It is. That is not like this one at all. Yeah. I got this used in a music store for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Me and this banjo have been through a lot. Because of the floating bridge, because of it being on a drum, I thought it'd be more fragile. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's a... 
It's a drum. <laughs> yeah, it is. A, you can also get like, you can hear the chords when you're yeah. playing it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. <laughs> When did bluegrass start becoming well, you really? Well, like, it's arguable, but they say that Bill Monroe, they call the father of bluegrass, he was a mm -hmm. mandolin player. He started a band in 1946 called Bill Monroe and his mm -hmm. Bluegrass Boys. <laughs> and that's where, that's where people bluegrass... started calling it bluegrass after that. Why the Bluegrass Boys? Because they were they from rhyme? Kentucky, mm. and Kentucky is the bluegrass state. When Earl Scruggs joined Bill Monroe's band, they say that was when the music really was born. Mm. Uh, and Earl Scruggs is like the Jimi Hendrix of banjo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think bluegrass is this perfect American genre of music because it's an mm -hmm. amalgamation of music from all over the world. Yeah. There are African roots in this music. There mm -hmm. is, you know, Irish, including jazz. There's a lot of jazz mm -hmm. in bluegrass. I've always felt that like bluegrass and, and metal have a similar, at least they're like high energy, lots of notes. Oh like, yeah. I get a similar feeling with bluegrass than I get. With Absolutely. With, with I've, you know, I think bluegrass is, is pretty punk rock. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, okay, so how do you play it like bluegrass? <laughs> Not me. So I know, I know a little bit of uh, like finger picking. <laughs> from playing acoustic guitar. Maybe we play Foggy Mountain Breakdown. I mean, if that's the... Let's start with some okay. basics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta start with, with picks. So you uh, always play with picks attached to your fingers. Yeah. Without it, this instrument just doesn't... That's how I've been playing it. Right? And if you wanna be a bluegrass musician... And I do. You gotta use picks. So here's a thumb pick and two finger picks. Mm. Thumb pick, just like that. And then I use these two fingers right here. Yeah, one or two. Your pinky or your ring finger to anchor it. Okay, how do I put this on? <laughs> so you want to you see mine kind of fit relatively tightly and stick off the edge. So you can okay. squeeze the yeah, squeeze yeah, the bands yeah. there so it gets a little tighter. It's going to feel strange. Yeah, it does feel strange. The, the, the contact of the pick with the string, it should be right in the meat, right in the middle of that pick. Mm. And that makes the sound really clean. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. so the foundations of bluegrass banjo is what they call rolls, finger picking patterns, essentially. Yeah. The first one you teach somebody, if you count the strings yeah. with the, the one, two, three, four, five, so the one, yep, so you've got three, two, five, one. There okay. you go. You got it too. Yeah, dude. No, ah. You got it, you got it. You got it. <laughs> That would be the first one you learned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know you're a pro musician and everything, but I think it's important for people to recognize that like, it kind of is this easy. Like, yeah. you, you make it look easy. I remember the first time I sat down with the banjo, I was able to play like that in about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it's just consistent. Yeah. And that's all yeah, I was hey, doing was hey, yep. the, that, this, the basic role and like it's a cool foundation that was beautiful. I do this in guitar as well where I'll tune it to an open tuning and then all the open strings just give you a G and you can always, re or whatever, and revert back to it. And banjo, that's just built in. Yeah, let me give you another role too, the forward reverse role. So it's an eight note roll. Okay. So it's three, two, one, five, and then one, two, three, one. Bye. 
I'm just playing bass. That's just ba that's just bass playing. You approve? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Using finger picks is awesome. Yeah. It really gives the instrument part of its voice. Yeah, this sounds know? like bluegrass. Yeah. This totally, sounds like bluegrass totally. to me. Totally. Uh, another thing I noticed when we were jamming, I'm just hanging around in G major, just uh -huh. going right to my Midwest Illinois boy roots. Sure. But like you sound like Kentucky. Why, why do you sound like Kentucky and I sound like an Illinois boy? It's the feel that bluegrass has. Well, like what, what, what note are you doing there, right at the beginning? That's a, oh, that's a slide, that's a big fat slide. Of thing. And these are all Earl Scruggs tenements. Yeah, that's F, right? Yeah. Okay, because I'm thinking this is G, so you're in G major, you wouldn't go to F. That's a, the first note of a slide, so and yeah. that slide can be, but it could also be. I, okay, but you but you hung on the F, and that sounds like Kentucky to me. I mean, to me, I don't know. Yeah, I've never thought of it that way. This is all just part of my vocabulary that I yeah, don't yeah. think about that often. Yeah, but anymore. that's what's so fascinating to me, because like G major, you would skip that F. Right, right. Right, and so like, yeah. <laughs> so I was gonna slide a bit. Yeah. And that, to me, for some reason, staying within G major and hanging on that seven, now it sounds like I'm in Champaign, Illinois. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving my Honda Civic around, you know. But you take it to the F, and now I'm in my truck in Kentucky, right? Yeah, I guess I never thought of it that way, but I, I can hear what you're talking about totally. I'm trying to figure out the directions to get to get my band into Kentucky. And yeah. I think starting with, with notes that are outside of G major, Hanging on them and then going back into G major is that that that's where that sound is? I guess Question so. Mark? I've never thought about it yeah. that way. Yeah. Once again, back to Earl, and yeah. we're all emulating what mm. he did, and that's what he did. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. In that, in his vocabulary, I'm sticking to just G major. Yeah. And like, if I'm getting dissonant or like going away from the major chord, it's like a seventh or a ninth, something that's within G major. But you're going out of G major yeah. and hanging on F or like, like right here. That to me makes it sound. Yeah. yeah it like, it sounds like bluegrass to me now. I didn't know that that was that was part of it. Yeah. I think you could learn some Foggy Mountain Breakdown, dude. Uh, let's go for it. It does involve those hammer-ons. A hammer-on is when you hit a string with your right hand, and your left hand changes the note by hammering on that string. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then pull-off is the opposite. Right, Where, like, pull you pull off, off of the string. Yeah. Right. Hammer-on yeah. and pull-off. And I imagine in banjo, just like fast guitar playing, any trick we can use to get more notes, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna use. It's like you gotta yeah, be yeah. as flashy as possible. <laughs> so Let's talk about the fifth string a little bit for yeah. people that don't know. I think to people, especially guitar players that like pick up the banjo for the first time, that fifth string oh, is so confusing. Yeah, and it's funny, when I pick up a guitar, I'm looking for it. I'm like, why is it that string in this? <laughs> it is a, one of the cores of the instrument mm -hmm. without that fifth string. I feel broken. The fifth string, it's up here. If you're playing below the fifth fret, you're not gonna fret that string. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. stay the same note. Yep. It's going to drone. And um, because this is an open G, it is a... It's a G. It's a G. Yeah. And if you wanna play in a different key, and you wanna use a capo, I put a capo here, and then I've got these ones. These are literally model railroad spikes. Yeah, so it's like a capo. Yeah, it's a little mini capo. Like if you're in a jam session and someone's like, this tune's an A, you just put your capo on, yep. you wrap your kit, your string, and then you have all the same. And then you're playing the same shapes. Yeah. It also, in some ways, is very limiting. You got G and A. Oh, man. You G got a, G B and flat, A and B, B, B C. Yeah. Down. You know, even D. Some people capo at the seventh fret, but it's really frowned upon. Oh, yeah? You Why? Know? I don't, you know, like, bluegrass musicians can be so snooty. <laughs> and, like, I, okay, that, that's also what I've learned. Like, anytime I, I talk to someone who's, like, really, really into an instrument, that's, that's something that I hear. I, yeah. It drives me nuts. And, yeah. like, I feel like. <laughs> I think our goal as professional musicians should be to inspire other people to be musicians. Hell yeah. Back to the drone string. Yeah. Something that's really special about the banjo is because it's all on the drum, you hit one string and all the other strings vibrate. They do. And then even if you're playing like crazy, this G string is always giving you some resonance, like kind of like a sitar. Because if I strum the other strings... And, and it's funny, I know that's important to you because I've seen you make a note and shake the, the banjo. Yeah, and it's, I know another banjo, Jens Kruger does that. And like, and I think that's so cool, and it's not something I take advantage of enough, but it is ethereal. And I love harmonics. Yeah, and, and this instrument, 
accentuates that stuff yeah. big time because it's a resonator. That's exactly. literally what this is called. Yep. It's called a resonator. Yeah, yeah. It resonates yeah. the music, and mm -hmm. and that's definitely I think one of the things that draws people to the instrument is yeah. the res the resonation. Listen for the drum string. So you almost don't hear the drum string. Yeah. When you slow it down a little bit. Uh, you hear those other ones a little bit more, mm -hmm. you figure out how to accentuate those melody notes and keep those other ones just a little bit below it yeah. so that you've got this kind of wall of sound all yeah. within your right hand to support the melody notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's something I really found I, I loved about banjo is for a different style of music. Yeah. Ooh, can we just get a G? Okay, so this is like my core musical influences are Midwest Emo, which is what we're playing here, and actually playing like open tuning guitars okay. and like hanging on those sevenths. What's mid I'm Midwest, Midwest emo. emo? I mean, it's just the feeling of being in the Northwest suburbs and being sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's American bands. football. American football is a That's band. a band? Yeah. Electric guitars and open tunings, letting a lot of the strings ring, just like in banjo. <laughs> My truck, but I'm in Arlington Heights, and you're sad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or I have my Honda Civic in Kentucky, and right, I'm sad. Right. Like, <laughs> you're totally right about the open strings thing. I mean, yeah. that is yeah. huge part yeah. of this. I love the resonance of the banjo. Yeah, I do too. Now that you got really picks around. on, I want you to try this versus try that. Yeah. I just don't have the Kentucky in me yet. No, you don't, but man, I'm really impressed, honestly. You are planting your fingers and your rolls are really tight, dude. Thank you. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not doing anything wrong by mixing it up. Okay. Good, because uh, that's probably the only way I'll be able to yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean, the roll's the foundation, but you can, you can see when I'm doing that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, those, like, so, yeah, okay, that's what I'm learning. Those dissonant notes outside of G major, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but they're always like transitioning. It's almost like you're at a major chord and then it's like you got to go through the dissonance to get there. I want to see if I can get that with just the bass. Or do you want to play guitar? Yeah, yeah maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I can handle it. Sounded like you know yeah. maybe the band showed up and the banjo was really drunk, but he can play banjo, you know. <laughs> That's on brand though. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. I do have one more yes, odd, please. odd banjo. Oh I can yes, show please. You here. This is a cello banjo. It's also a G. Oh sweet. It's just an octave. Oh, it's just a full octave down. Let's talk about emo. <laughs> You want to try it? I would love to try it.
Yeah, dude. <laughs> I was gonna end with this. Like my muscle memory with the banjo is like, I gotta do this in the end. And that's another thing that's core to the banjo that doesn't really go through in, in video because videos can only be so loud. Mm -hmm. But banjos are loud. Oh man, like, when we first started, that was all we had was the one mic. Yeah. It was a nightmare for sound. Right. But that's something cool about like old school bluegrass is like the mix oh. is where you're standing. Someone takes a solo and they just like absolutely. Get to the and mic. we did that for a long yeah. time. So, all right, Foggy so, Mountain, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. We got like what now? Forty minutes. The key thing that you need to learn is that hammer on. They call this the Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. It starts on that first string and then. Yep, so you do it I'm twice. Okay. You, you got it, you do it twice and the third time. You do a pull off. Ooh, I'm close. Yeah, you I'm are, close. you are close. close. You're really close. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna get the picking now. That's all right, that's, all right. that's this, the whole song. Yeah, that's it. That's it's an instrumental. Do we want to get the other folks who are gonna play? With yeah, yeah. Mandolin is actually tuned just like a standard tuned guitar, but backwards. If we're gonna bluegrass, like really bluegrass, yeah, yeah, I need yeah, to stand up. Do you, do you guys know the chords already? They do. They sound great. I think so. Sweet. All right. Hey. hey. Are we in Kentucky yet? <laughs> We're like at least in Springfield, Illinois. Now. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, with the full Probably band. Edwardsville. I start it and then you go, or we just go back and forth, or we go back and forth. We yeah. go back and forth, and then that's the video. Yeah, man. Are we good to go, Rob? All right, give it a try. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you so much, Absolutely. John. Thank you so much, Rashid, Tegan. Uh, Seriously, you guys, like, no joke. Like, that was awesome. Like, how did that feel? Yeah, yeah, Is, yeah. yeah. I mean that. And that's the video. Uh, subscribe. I'm sure this isn't the last time we have musical fun on this channel. Thanks again to everyone, and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. <laughs>